Hey everyone, Jason here. Part three in our five part series of getting pedals mounted to your pedal board. And today we're gonna to talk about bolts. Not that one though. So the process for bolting your pedals to your pedal board, it goes like this. Take the back cover off and keep whatever was holding it on there. You're gonna find out what bolt or screw or whatever you have that was actually holding it on. You're gonna find out what type that is and we're gonna go shopping for a longer version of it. How much longer? However much thickness you have to make up for in the thickness of your pedal board. Okay, take the back cover of the pedal, put it down on your pedal board, you're gonna mark four holes which you're gonna to have to drill out. Then the, the new longer bolts are gonna come up through the bottom of the pedal board, through the back cover and into the pedal, bolting the pedal to the pedal board. Cool. Uh, good thing about this solution, that pedal's not going anywhere once you bolt it. I mean, how many times have you tried to pull your pedal off a pedal board that already had Velcro or something on it and the bolts actually just stripped out of the bottom of your pedal? Probably never. Very, very secure. A downside, well, you have to drill holes in your board and if you like to swap your pedals out a li little bit, uh, this is definitely going to take a long time to do it with this. But uh, if you're looking for security and you like to keep your rig set up one way, then this could be a good solution for you. So the most important part about this process is making sure that you get the right bolts. So if you look at a bolt, there's three main attributes of the bolts you want to consider when you go shopping for a new one. And the first one is the diameter or the size. For Imperial system, anything smaller than a quarter inch in diameter is just going to be a single number preceded by a pound sign like, you know, number six, number seven, something like that, like here, this number 10. Okay. Again, anything quarter inch or bigger is going to be just the fraction. Okay, if you have metric, it's going to start with, a, with an M for metric. The second measurement is going to be the thread pitch, which is how far apart or how many threads there actually are on the bolt. For Imperial, it's going to just be a number, and that number is going to to represent how many threads per inch there are on the bolt. For metric, it's going to be a number which tells you how far apart the individual threads are on the bolt. Now here on these number 10s, okay, again, number 10 being the diameter, you can see I have a 24 and a 32. The 24 is the coarse version, 24 threads per inch, and the 32 is the fine version, which has 32 threads per inch. On this metric, you can see that's an M7, so approximately seven millimeters in diameter, uh, with a thread pitch of one millimeter, which means all the individual threads are one millimeter apart. So that's the second, that's thread pitch. And the third is gonna be the length, which is easy enough. Going back to these, that's obviously three quarter inches long. The metric and millimeter is 70 millimeters long. So those are the three attributes you need to know when you go bolt shopping. Now how you figure all this out is actually pretty straightforward. The easiest way is just take the, all the bolts that you need to match down to the hardware store. If you go down to the hardware section, you'll see a plate that's drilled and tapped to accommodate all the different common varieties of the bolts that they're gonna have there on the shelf. All you have to do is take your bolt and start running through all the, all the holes in the bolt plate to see which one matches. Now, the diameter isn't gonna be that difficult to figure out. Uh, it may be a little difficult to get the exact one between English and metric if they're close, but I mean, just, just take your time, try as many uh, of the different options as they have. You have to be really careful between the coarse and the fine thread though. Um, a, a coarse thread typically will not fit into a fine threaded hole, but a fine threaded bolt will sometimes go into a coarse threaded hole and it, it'll feel like it fits, but it's really just going to be loose and chances are your pedal can pop off. So take your time, uh, make sure you have a good fit. And then again, when you get that bolt, line them up, see if the new bolt that you got will lock in with the threads on your old bolt. When you put it together, those threads should mate, should be nice and steady with no play in there. I'm gonna use this technique to mount up two pedals. One, the Deluxe Memory Man, which uses a very standard looking bolt. I'm also gonna do this TC Electronic, which uses a not so standard looking bolt. 
But if you get something really exotic like this, don't let it worry you. Don't feel like you have to get something that looks exactly like that. Um, while, while this looks exotic and hard to find, it's not. It's just a standard one quarter inch 20 bolt. And I've already fitted these into the pedal and they work just fine. And again, I found this no problem down at the local hardware store. So if you get something weird, don't worry about it. Just remember the diameter and the pitch and whatever length you need. When you mark your holes on your pedal board, two things to keep in mind. Oh geez, okay. You wanna keep everything square if you can. And the first is just appearance. I mean, if I looked down and I had uh, bolted my pedal onto my pedal board and it was crooked, it would drive me crazy. Um, so just any kind of speed square, small uh, square, whatever you have, just make sure it's lined up and, and centered and just looking good, okay? Now the second is, when I talk about square, I'm talking about uh, perpendicular to the surface of the pedal board. And this is important because even when you mark your holes, you want your pencil to be straight up and down. If you angle it too much this way or that way and the mark gets off center, the hole's not gonna be lined up when you drill. And if that bolt comes through the bottom of the pedal board at an angle, there's a very good chance you're gonna strip it out. It's just not gonna fit and it's just gonna cause you all kinds of problems. So as you go through this, make sure that when you mark your holes, everything is as straight up and down as possible. And use whatever you need. Again, you can bust out the square for the pencil in the hole and just line it up. Just make sure that pencil is straight up and down. You know, best you can. <clears throat> Another tool you can use for this, if you don't want to mark it, you just want to get to drilling as quickly as possible, this is a self-centering drill bit, which basically it's just a drill bit inside of this sheath. And these are used for like if you put hinges on a door or something like that to make sure that you get the hole through or get the get the screw through the center of the, the holes and the hinges. So basically when you put this down onto a round hole like that, when you then push down with the drill while it's drilling, the drill bit will end up right in the center of the hole. So you could even just, assuming it's all um, lined up where you want it, if you push down and just gave it a little turn back and forth, they would probably make enough of a mark on your pedal board that you could use when you go to drill. So, but regardless, just use whatever you have. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of special tools to do this. Well, so what you may want to do is get a simple clamp. Once you get this where you want it, clamp it down because you don't want to mark one hole and then as you go to mark a different hole, have this shift on you because that's going to create a whole bunch of other problems. So clamp it down if you need to. I'm just going to simple thing, but after you mark them, actually make sure to go back and make sure that you can see them because maybe if the pencil didn't get all the way down or you just didn't make it hard enough, you only have three, then you have to go back and line this up with the existing ones and you know, it, it's just a mess. Once you take it off, just check right away, make sure you can see all your marks. A couple things to keep in mind before we drill. First of all, if you can, if the form factor of your pedal board allows it, always use a scrap piece or a sacrificial piece of wood underneath your pedal board. So when the drill bit goes through the bottom of the pedal board, it's gonna go into this board. The reason you do that is so you don't get tear out or blow out on the bottom of your pedal board. Uh, instead of the drill bit pushing all those wood fibers through, this sacrificial board will help to provide some you know, structural stability on the bottom of this board, and you'll get a cleaner hole on the bottom. And regardless of whether you can use one of these or not, I would definitely take this opportunity to clamp things down if you can. Make sure this nothing's gonna shift around on you or that this board won't actually lift up away from the sacrificial piece when the point of the drill bit goes through. So keep it then clamped down if you can. You can get these clamps really cheap at the hardware store, just a couple bucks each. Now, just as we made sure that everything was square and perpendicular to the surface of the board we made our marks, we wanna do the same thing when we drill. Now, a couple ways you can do that. One is I still have my small square from earlier. I just took the ruler part out of it because it was too big and I didn't have enough clearance. If you take just any square object you happen to have, once you get the point of the drill bit there, if you just align the drill bit with the edge of your square object, uh, that's gonna let you know when your drill is at a right angle to the surface. And again, like I said, like any square object, honestly, this chorus pedal, 
It happens to have a very square edge on it. Works just as well. You just spot your drill bit, line it up along that edge, and drill. If you want something a little better, you can get these drill bit guides. And it's just a small platform, and it has a little compartment in there for these bushings, which have different size holes and it could correspond to different size drill bits. Now, you, you don't need the exact size drill bit you're going to use. As long as you can get it pretty close, it'll probably be better than freehanding. At least it's better for than my freehanding. Easy enough. Just run the drill bit through, spot the tip to where you're going to drill. And as long as you keep this flush up against the pedal board surface, it's going to keep the drill bit perpendicular to the surface as you drill down. Okay, we got five new holes in our pedal board. At the top, here's the bottom. So we have three variations. We have these three, which are fine, and that's what a clean hole should look like. Okay. Now I have this fourth one. You know, there's a bit of a bevel, so let's talk about that. Here's the original screw that I took out of the Memory Man. And here's the new screw, which is longer and also a slightly different type, has a much bigger head on it which is going to be a good thing for us because one that gives us a little bit of flexibility in the size of the hole that we drilled and two it's just going to have a lot more uh, retaining strength on the bottom side of the pedal board now if you just drill a hole what will happen is if you get something like that is it will pop out a little bit which honestly i mean it's not a huge deal for me but if you tighten it down over time as your pedal starts to move this bolt will want to compress this wood just a little bit um, because it's only the edge of this bolt is only hitting just the edge of that wood. So there's actually a very small area of contact. If you take a countersink bit, which looks like this or this, and these are easy to find, you can get them at any, at any hardware store. Uh, what they're going to do is just give you that bevel on the inside of the hole. And it allows the bevel on the head of the screw to sit flush against it. So one, there's an appearance factor. One, it sits flush and it just looks a little bit more nice and just a little more professional. But two, you have a lot greater surface area contact now because the edge of the bolt is flush against the entire inside of that bevel. Now, when you these are wood countersinks and I think these are a 60 degree angle on those, which is what most wood screws are. I don't know for sure that that's a 60 degree angle. It doesn't really look like it because that's a machine bolt, so it's a little different. If you really want to get particular, you could probably find a countersink with that exact matching bevel. But even if you just used a wood countersink and the, the machine bolt, you'd still be better off than not using one at all. Now, the third variation over here, I came back with a 5H drill bent to drill a hole big enough for that quarter inch 20 we need for the TC Electronics. And I didn't clamp it down. And that's what tear out looks like. If you just let the, the drill bit just plow right through the bottom of that plywood, you get that splintering and chipping and tear out. And especially on this veneered plywood, because you just have a very thin layer of veneer on top of the, the thicker core pieces of plywood, that splinters up very easily. So if you don't want that, make sure everything is clamped down. And you tend to get this a little bit more with the bigger drill bits anyway. So if you're just drilling, a uh, hole this size, it's not as big a problem, but for the bigger bits to really kind of control that, make sure you get that sacrificial stock under there, clamp it down hard, or uh, get access to a drill press. And again, clamp it down, take your time. Okay, got my screws, we've got our holes. Uh, let's mount it up. And that's it. So I did cheat a little bit and I went back and I countersunk all four of the holes on this side just because I like the, uh, I like the look better. And after I did that, I found out that uh, my 20 millimeter bolts were long enough. And also the downside, um, I actually tried to do the 30 millimeter bolts I pulled out earlier on one of the non countersunk holes and it turned out that bolt was too long. Now, normally if you have a bolt that's just a little bit too long, if you have any kind of pair of wire strippers, 
they have bolt cutters built in and bolts this size are really easy to cut. You just screw it in, you know, take, you know, squeeze it, take off as much as you want and uh, screw it back out. Now, the key to that is you, this is, these are actually threaded. So after you cut it, when you take the bolt back out, it will re cut the threads on the end of the bolt that may have gotten mashed when you cut it. I don't have a metric bolt stripper, so I couldn't really cut down the 30 millimeters. I probably could have, and if I dug around, I probably could have found the right nut size. Yeah, but I didn't. So, but it didn't matter because after, like I said, after a countersunk, uh, I got enough depth back that the 20 millimeter screws were long enough. So, and again, the one big quarter inch 20 over here for the TC Electronic. So, there you go, not too difficult to do and certainly secure. Now, depending on how many different pedals you have, how many different manufacturers, this could be a chore if you want to do a whole pedal board this way, just because there's a lot of different screw sizes out there and it may take you quite a while to find something that's going to work for you. But uh, nothing is impossible to find, N uh, enough patience and, and you'll find it, that's the way you want to go. That's it for number three, I'll see you soon with uh, number four.